Hello, I'm your host Quexo and today I will be talking about the biggest show in the recent years, Jujutsu Kaisen. Beware, for real. I will try my best to dissect my thoughts about it and talk about what I loved, hated about it. There will be spoilers for the anime adaptations, but I will try to keep them subtle, but I can't really promise a lot. So yeah, let's get started, shall we? Yuji Itadori, or main character who is gifted physically, just wants to have his peace and quiet, visiting his gramps in the hospital at 5 in the afternoon whenever he can. Only for it to end up one day when his grumps, after telling Yuji to try to live a better life of helping others so he won't be alone at the end like he is, passes away. After that, it gone only downhill for the most part, putting his club members in mortal danger with the cursed item he found and gave them, saving them only to end up being possessed by one of the strongest curses in history, having only two hells to choose from, and he chooses the harder one. That is, to find all the cursed items, shallow them and then be executed. The former was just to die right away, knowing his death won't be the kind his grandpa wishes for him, he tries his best. He goes on missions with his teammates, saves some people, talks a lot with his new schoolmates, just to be shown there is a special great spirit and almost dying. After that he trained in secret and came out a bit later, just in time for the inter-school matches, where he was scolded by his teammates cause duh, not saying that he was alive was a douche move, I mean, yeah, for real. Apologizing, he goes into the match just to be targeted by the enemy team with the intent to kill. I mean, yeah, they wanted to kill him, so yeah. He is a curse, technically. Befriending a guy from their school, who he calls brother, he goes into a weird phase. Just to get attacked by spirits, by the evil curses. Everyone surviving from the student body was a big win for everyone involved. After that, Yuji is making friends with the other students, talking about movies, going out for drinks and talking a lot about his hobbies, doing some missions, and one of them, the suspect was a guy his age, so he befriends him, talking about their hobbies and bonding in general, even visiting his house, meeting his mother and having a fun dinner, just for his friend to lose his mother to curse and then the friend in person being turned into curse forced to fight with him and then being forced to kill him with his own hands, getting another wake up call and this is just the beginning of Yuji's suffering cause it will get worse, a lot worse. His journey of him collecting all the fingers and being executed in the end is filled with thorns and blades cutting into his body and soul. Making the journey agonizing, mostly cause it all happens after we get the camera ready in the bright moments. It is clearly shown how the days are portrayed, as the curses are nocturnal or act in the night most of the time. We get the solace in the bright parts of the day, making our main cast to have their most wholesome, funny, friendship building moments when the sun is up, and plunging us into despair the moment the veil of darkness comes. Having us following Yuji and his comrades into the horrors of the curses, I had talked a lot about the series and what I'm going to be talking about, but I did find out that, for me, the series is less about the actions, the fights and the drip of the characters, and I feel like Jujutsu Kaisen is more about the really charismatic personalities of all the characters, which are making us fall in love with all of them. Whenever it is the cool and collected Nobara, which snaps from time to time, despite being just a tomboy who values her close friends a lot. She is someone who is similar to our Yuji, is being able to sacrifice herself just to help out others. Or we have the worry hat Fushiguro who tries to be a model student just to find out that he was holding back his growth the whole time. By not having goals and being unhappy with even the little bit of progress, he turns it around and starts to be more open, like Yuji, outgoing and bold with his actions, making him a really likable character who in the end has the same trait as Nobara and Yuji of self-sacrifice. Each of the main student characters have some sort of backstory which can resonate with one of us in one way or another, like Nobara just having two friends at home who she cherishes, or Fushiguro who sister is in coma thanks to a curse and he tries to look for a way to lift it, with the only way of releasing the curse is being able to kill the curse or having the curse to lift the curse. Yuji, well, <laughs> about Yuji it was already explained. 
The balancing of the bright and sunny elements with the dark and ghastly elements of the show are making it the best horror, psychological and action show in the recent years, so let me explain for a bit. The horror element is making us feel safe in the bright, shiny, dazzling moments of the daytime, when we see the cast making progress with their friendship getting closer to each other, trying to have a lot of fun and succeeding in letting all guard down. After that comes the feeling of unease, full of discomfort and anxiety, unnerving, unsettling, disturbed and daunted. All of those emotions come flying up on us the moment we see the screen turn into the shades of grey, dark red and black. We know that we are in for a treat with the action sequences, but at the same time we don't know the outcome of it all. It is those moments that we are plunged into the darkness that we can see how our cast grows even more. The moment of crisis is the moment of opportunity. But there is a thin line to shred. Sometimes the line can snap not only making us lose all the progress, sometimes it can cost us even over our own lives. But of course, every night has a day switching with it. And that's why I think that making most of the big incidents happen in the night was a brilliant move. This is my honest opinion as to why I think that it is a horror-esque story with a lot of horror elements. Even if the story is packed to the brim with action elements, it is a bit different than it being a pure action story. A pure action show would be something like The God of High School, Gintama, Bleach or Hunter x Hunter. Just compare it a bit to the series of Higurashi when they cry. We can see a lot of similarities with the balancing of the bright and dark sides of the story. You can see it even in Berserk, God's having a miserable life, getting a bit of bright moments with Casca and the bands of the Falcon just to be plunged into the hell by Griffith during the eclipse. I can even throw Chainsaw Man into the mix, making us feel scared at times of the happy moments cause we know, it will break us. The whole story feels unnerving, having no way of knowing in which direction it will go just for the new day to come in the end. Think as for how every night and every nightmare becomes shattered by the first rays of daylight, and at the same time, the moment it goes down, we get new nightmares, new challenges and a new night to look out for our very own lives. The same could be said for the psychological aspects. We can see it with Eita Gojo and Geto or Yuji and Mahito. Having the two pairs, the biggest focus with the psychological aspect, displaying Gojo and Geto both having the same ideas, being uh, bosom friends, having the chemistry between themselves, making funny conversations, having each other's backs, being friends that can rely on each other whenever the other one has problems, just for it all to break down. The biggest turning point was the moment when they got an important mission in which they end up failing but at the same time succeeding. Growing mentally and in strength, Gojo finally reaches a new height making him the humanity's strongest Jujutsu sorcerer. As for Geto not being able to overcome the trauma of failing the mission, being angry at the curses but mostly on himself, he turns away from his friend. Not being able to even hold the conversation for longer than they each deem necessary, they both go in their own directions. On the paths the other one could not take, knowing that Ghetto does a lot of batshit crazy stuff, but Gojo still considers Ghetto as his best friend. Even when they go their own ways, as for Ghetto seeing Gojo having all the power he ever wanted but not being able to change the world, still in doubt with his heart, not knowing if he should even care to save the non-sorcerers anymore, cause the last mission with Gojo, thinking hard about it, he is presented with only few paths before for himself if he wants to eradicate or the suffering from the curses. One, eliminate all cursed energy from mankind. Second, make everyone be able to use cursed energy. Or third, the most easy but radical at the same time is to kill off all non-sorcerers in the meantime having the non-sorcerers adapt to the cursed energy making them sorcerers in the process. Going to a mission into the mountains, he sees how the tree took it as demons, abusing them, caging them up, cursing onto them, just for the two of them to be Jujutsu sorcerers. And that was the moment he snapped. He kills all of the 112 villagers and saves the girls. Geto finding his goal of creating only a world for Jujutsu sorcerers, being confronted by Gojo. Geto admits he even killed his own parents because he does not consider them his family anymore and he won't be making any exceptions into his plans. Gojo saying it is impossible for Geto to kill all the non-sorcerers. Just to be rebuked by Geto saying that if he... 
Gojo could make it possible, then why is he hypocritical about the whole situation and saying to Ghetto that it is impossible for him? Is it because Ghetto is not the strongest sorcerer, because the strongest sorcerer is Gojo Satoru? Or because Gojo Satoru is the strongest sorcerer because he is Gojo Satoru? So it is ridiculous to convince someone that it is impossible if Gojo is able to do it. Not being able to kill Ghetto because he is conflicted inside, Gojo is frustrated and finds his own goal. The goal of raising the young generation. Because even if he is the strongest, he, Gojo, still needs comrades to widen his net, to be able to save even more people. Just from all of this we can see that even if two people are from the same environment, the same ideals and even the same experiences, they can end up in the roads which are polar opposites of each other, because everyone is their own person, everyone thinks and grows differently, and we the viewers can see it unfold before us on the screens for which I'm really happy about. As for the mirror matchup of Maito and Yuji we've got two major encounters. In the first encounter we get that Maito is just a child in his heart <laughs> who wants to kill the boredom in his life as a curse. Finding pleasure in his growth and manipulation of people, giving them false hope just to rob them of it away at the very end, being against your protagonist Yuji who wants to help and save as many people as possible cause of his grandpa's last wish. Still recognizing it being similar to a curse, Yuji accepts it and tries to live according to his grandpa's will. But his encounter with Mahito shatters Yuji's worldview again and again and again. Let's go back to Junpei for a bit. He was Yuji's friend for a moment, just for Mahito turning him into a monster, giving him the command to kill Yuji and that was the first time Yuji really hated Mahito for what he is. He talked that curses are mostly mindless or just have a low IQ being fueled by the desire to kill and devour. But seeing how an advanced cursed spirit like Mahito just does it for fun, making Yuji sheet with anger. After that we can see even in the second encounter the same thing. The brilliant part is that Yuji is the only one immune to Mahito, cause he feels the shape of his soul. Thanks to Sukuna possessing him, making Yuji a bit of a counter, still Yuji withholding most of his anger only to break after what Mahito has done. Still, with the help of Todo, wake up, brother! He gets up and fights, but the even more brilliant play is that not only does Yuji grow in their encounters and fights with each other, Mahito does too. After that, we get even more amazing fighting sequences pushed out, which will end up with. Not saying. <laughs> you gotta watch it. But here you can see Yuji representing the Jujutsu Sorcerers and Mahito the Curses being just the two sides of the same coin, both doing and pushing their sense of justice onto each other, one killing humans as if drinking a morning coffee and the other killing curses so he can save one more person just cause he can help some other people. Even true with him just existing, it can be said that it makes even more people lose their lives, sometimes we want to be selfish if we want to live. Even if we know that when we died we could save thousands upon thousands of lives, it is still something which most of us would not do, cause we only live once and <laughs> we are humans, so we are selfish. That's understandable. That's why it's such an interesting show to talk about. I mean, if I want to talk about the fighting sequences alone we would be here for literal hours, and there are many more angles from which we can look at the whole series. It is quite hard to talk about the show without being spoiled most of the time, but I try to keep the spoilers as subtle as possible, still I could not avoid them all. But yes, those were my honest thoughts on the show, so to finish it up, did I enjoy the show? Heck yeah I did, absolutely, I loved every moment of it. Do I think it's the greatest show of all time? No. Is it in the top 10? Nope, not really. Uh, 20? Probably. Why? Well, there are many reasons. But the moment we get to the peak shows, it's hard to put such a presumptuous notion of an idea as a rank to a show. We know that each of them is a pinnacle of their respective genres. So what about Jujutsu Kaisen? 
Well, it is the best action anime in the recent decade and in the foreseeable future we won't be able to get a better action show if solo leveling does not step up a bit more. Cause solo leveling, Chainsaw Man and Hell's Paradise are probably the only series which can keep up with the breakneck action sequences of the series. The problem with those three series is that there are only around 12 episodes for the first season of each show. Not having enough time to let us enjoy the action and cutting abruptly in the middle not having enough time to ramp it up a little bit and not having time to get to know the characters a bit better. Not enough time to flesh out the world, that's why they have such problems to catch up with Jujutsu Kaisen on the hype train, which the show, as you all know, delivers. Sometimes taking the risk and releasing the first season with 20 plus episodes is worth it. Cause we create more of a connection with the show and hence making the overall enjoyment of the show even better. All in all, it is a must watch for every horror, gore, fighting and action fan enjoyer. For the most part, I can only sing praises on the show. Give it a go and cheer yourself into the pit which is Jujutsu Kaisen. Thank you all for watching, press like and subscribe and stay in good health. Bye!